Hello, my name is Michael Joubert from MJ's Adventure. Today, we're in Silvertone, Colorado, and because a lot of people have asked, today we're gonna to be talking about my solar power panel. And and my whole system that I have for this. Now, before I talk about good and bad, it's been a lot of things that people have been asking me about. And it took me a while to figure it out if it was a good thing or a bad thing. So let's start with the good thing. If you like to have people come in and ask you question every time you camp, every time you're somewhere, do it this way because people are drawn to it. They see this curve panel and they think it's the best thing in the world. In reality, it's not. I'm very disappointed with the, the panel. Technically, it's two 100 watts panel and I should be able to get 60% of the power, so I should be able to get 120 watts. At full sun, I have never reached 100 watts. I think the best I've seen is 60 watts. So it's not really what it meant to be. I think the panel does not cor correctly get the sun correctly. I think if the sun is only hitting this section, it's only going to hit this section, this is not very good here and there. So depending on what's going on, it is not very efficient. Now, if the only thing you want to do is keep your power on your batteries full, trickle in so it's never going flat, it works. But I believe a smaller panel that is more, less flexible, or is more compact, will do the best job. But for this, it looks good. That's it. That's the only thing it does. So what I've done, is I put them in series basically to get me to the maximum uh, output and then from this point I connect it to the battery pack from that point so uh, the battery is the same one as the I believe it's the Inter Estate um, what I did is I installed the PP the MPPT module right here um, as of right now, I'm getting 113 volt and I'm not even seeing 21 watts. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. It is cloudy, but still. There is my inver inverter that I put in there and it's all connected. Now I created a cable that I put connects to my inverter that plugs into the front of the, of the thing. So basically I use the, the right uh, plug that goes in the front, plus a 110 that goes to the inver inverter, and that does the work. Now, if the batteries are full with my inverter, I can brew some coffee I can uh, make sure that uh, my domestic fridge is always plugged in and never runs out. Even if we are out for a very long time, I feel very secure that it does that. Uh, we have done a point where we were gone for almost 13 hours, came back in and it even uh, the battery was at 11.8 voltage because it got cloudy, but the fridge was cold. But still working so for that uh, that's pretty much the good thing we can have the fan running all night long uh, it will bring down the batteries down to 11.2 where at the morning you cannot brew coffee anymore you cannot do anything but if it was a very warm night it got the fan out it really helps so so would I do this again no Sample answer, I wouldn't do it. Um, I would probably get some rigid panel, attach them to the top 
all of this and I think it would do the same the same work so um, yeah I wouldn't do it I would uh, change the way but this is what we do we try things we see if it works and uh, well it didn't really work so I hope that helps a lot of people have been asking a lot of questions about it if you have more questions and comments please put them in the comments I will answer every single one of them uh, if I know the answer I will say it if not I will try to research it but that's what it is if you like the video like the video and if you want to see more videos like this please subscribe and I uh, appreciate watching all my videos and thank you again for uh, for that so thank you again bye